Hello and welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, where we bring you the finest singer-songwriters in the Valley area. This week's special guest is Mr. Dave McBride. Dave? How you doing, man? Oh, pretty good. Glad to finally have you on the show. Thank you. I'm <clears throat> glad to be here. Now, tell me about yourself. Where were you born? Phoenix City. Nice. So you haven't moved far. <laughs> no, I haven't been very far, no. no. I've been here all my life. So what did your parents do? Uh, well, my, my mother was, most, most of my life, my mother was a single mother with seven children worked in the mill. Oh, fun. So, now, I'm assuming that working in the mill didn't leave her a lot of time for, like, playing music or anything? No. So, cause that's my, always my third that's question, right. which is, were they musical? <laughs> so, um, what, what were your earliest influences of music? Uh, we spent a lot of time in front of the eight-track player listening to Conway Twitty and uh, Waylon Jennings, George Jones, Merle Haggard. Oh, all the greats. All of them, yes, sir. Nice. Now, what, at what point did you decide that you wanted to go from listening to music to doing music of your own, playing music? Actually, I was, uh, in my, I was 21. Uh, but before that, when I was a kid, my mother married a musician, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a great musician, but he wasn't a very nice guy. Right. And um, one night when he was uh, mistreating her, he took the guitar that he was teaching me how to play and busted it on the wall in a million pieces. So I was, and I was 11 years old. So I was 21 before I bought a guitar and wanted to wow. play because I didn't want to be a musician, didn't want nothing to do with it. Understandable. And, and had a hard time getting over that, So, yeah. but I'm over it. So what drove you to, what, what drove you to actually pick it back up? Uh, every time I wanted to sing somewhere, nobody knew the song I wanted to play, so I had to learn, <laughs> I had to learn how to play the guitar. Necessity. Uh, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so, when you, when you finally got the guitar, tell me a little bit about how you got it off the ground, how you got started playing it. I bought me a Roy Clark big note song book, and I put the red, yellow, and blue dots on the neck, and, and I played it, and played it, and played it, and, and uh, my roommate said, can you go somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> that happens. And so I did. I went outside. And then the neighbors wanted me to go somewhere else. <laughs> so finally I find myself sitting in a van where nobody could hear me until I, yeah. you know, and I, and I did that for them. And I, I really, uh, I learned that the first thing I learned how to do was the dueling banjos picking. Mm -hmm. on, and I still can't do it. But I can play, <laughs> I can play rhythm, you know, yeah. enough to, to entertain yeah. a little bit. Mostly I entertain myself and then some people like it. Awesome. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's got to make you happy first. That's right. It really does. If it ain't no fun, you just can't do it. <laughs> That's right. So now what, when you started playing, what were some of the, what were some of the songs you were playing? Um, Conway Twitty, Hank Williams Jr., um, Marshall Tucker, Leonard Skinner and all that. Well, let's jump forward a little bit, and uh, once you picked up the guitar and once you <laughs> got out of the van, <laughs> <laughs> how did you go forth? How did you, did you put together a band? Did you go play an open mic? What did, how did you get that going? I run up on some guys that actually I, I've known all, uh, most of my life, but they, I didn't know they were playing music, and, mm. and they didn't know I was playing, and then one day we happened to be in the same place playing the guitar, and this was like 1983, and um, we started playing together, and then and in a little while we found us a bass player and a drummer, and then we st uh, formed a band called mm. the Goat Rock Express for, from the, back in the 80s, and, um, and we started playing, and, and we started, we'd go to different, the three of us to begin with would go to different places, and we'd go to the bars and see if they'd let us get in there and play for tips or just get mm -hmm. in there and play and you know whether it was for tips or not we usually got the tips but yeah. and we had a good time so then we started trying to get in the club we played all the VFWs, Colonial Inn, the Dale Ranch and yeah. um, from 83 to about 92. Wow. 
Now, how did you go from this band that you put together initially to the Raisin Cane band that you have now? Well, there was, um, um, I quit playing. There was a lull for about 17 years in between the Goat Rock Express and the Raisin Cane band. I, after my buddy died, I just didn't, didn't want to didn't want to play. I mean, it just didn't do anything for me. I didn't, wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. And uh, in 09, I run up on a friend that, that I've known all my life at the flea market of all places in Smith Station and, and asked him, Eddie Ellis, he's a lead guitar player. And I said, Eddie, how come we ain't never played before? And he said, well, let's play. So I said, you know a bass player and a drummer and all? He said, yeah, I know some guys that ain't doing nothing. So nice. we called them all up. And, and set up a meeting, and then we practiced about three times, and then we went to the Dell Ranch and started playing where we've been for the last three years. Wow, very cool. Uh, and it turned out really good. I, I, you know, I, I sometimes hate I missed all that time because I didn't know. Back in the day, there was lots of drama. Yeah. I don't like drama. And I didn't have fun like I have fun now with the music yeah. that we do. I never dreamed it could be this much fun. And we have a really good time playing every, every, everywhere we play at. And we have a really good time and enjoy it. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, that's definitely if, if, you know, you've got to have fun. If you're not that's having right. fun, something ain't right. That's right. Now, I, I know that, that, that primarily you're an entertainer. But you've done some writing. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I've got some songs I wrote that uh, I wrote as a young man, and but most of them were because of a heartbreak or something really sad, and and um, and that while I, I really like the songs and I think some of them are pretty good, um, I just that's not what I. That's, that's not what I want to do. I mean, I, when I sing something, I want to be, uh, and I like sad, you know, some sad songs that, um, that tell a story. And because I feel them, mm -hmm. is why I do them the way I do. And right. and the ones that I wrote, and I and I feel that. But it's just it's weird to to not be able to jump in there and just do stuff that I wrote because most of it was from a broken marriage or a yeah. broken home or you know it had to do with heartbreak and, mm -hmm. and I know country music is all about heartbreak and not losing your dog and getting your truck repoed but <laughs> well that's a good point but you know if, if and, and this is this is this is totally understandable you know you uh, if playing your own songs does not set you on fire then that is you know play songs that do. Exactly. And that's, that's absolutely flawlessly logical. Yeah. Now, I have one question before we go to one of your songs. Um, and this is the, you know, an earth shattering song. This is a uh, song, earth shattering question. This is one that, that you know, wrecks cities and, and starts wars. Elvis or the Beatles? Elvis. Elvis, another Elvis. Nice. <laughs> but now I like the Beatles. I grew up on that. Why Elvis over the Beatles? Not that there's any well, wrong see, he's the it. king. Well, he, he is the king. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was the king. Now George Strait's the king. But, well, well. but uh, yeah, I, mean, we, I did a lot of Elvis songs back in the day, you know, but I didn't never, I wasn't ever Elvis impersonator or nothing. But right. You didn't never have hair wasn't one. dark enough. <laughs> I didn't have enough whiskers either. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, let's check out one of today's <laughs> songs. We'll be right back after this. This is a song that uh, my wife and I wrote back in 1989. She 
said we've been through this so many times before and you say the same thing every time darling please forgive me i won't hurt you anymore she said i've heard enough you can't save your next line because i told you i'd leave if you did that just one more time she gave me all she had she did everything right and i was a fool leaving her home at night she tried and tried time and time and again and i couldn't tell her where i really been if i had stayed home and held on to her tight then i wouldn't be sitting here crying tonight it's all my fault i guess i lost my head now all i can hear are the last words she said she said we've been through this so many times before and you say the same thing every time darling please forgive me i won't hurt you anymore she said i've heard enough you can't save your next line because i told you i'd leave if you did that just one more time she said we've been through this so many times before and you say the same thing every time darling please forgive me i won't hurt you anymore she said i've heard enough you can't save your next line because i told you i'd leave if you did that just one more time and you had to push it Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Special guest, Mr. Dave McBride. Now, Dave, we, you, you've got the, the Raising Cane Band, and, uh, or the Raisin Cane Band, which, uh, uh, as I understand, is, is very popular in the area. I've never seen you myself, mostly due to job obligations. But uh, tell me a little bit about you guys and where you've played and, and uh, is, what, what, kind of a, what kind of a time people can expect to have when they come see you. Oh, they can have, expect to have a good time when they go where the David McBride and the Raising Cane Band's at because as we, uh, you know, from the very beginning, if, if it ain't a good show, mm -hmm. ain't nobody coming. Yeah. And if it don't, if it don't stay good, they ain't going to stay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, uh, so we, we, <clears throat> we've worked hard to put together what we got and, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to... You know, I've been and watched a lot of bands, and, and a lot of them are great musicians, and then all of them put on a good show. But then if you don't reach out to the crowd, if you don't reach out there and get them and get their attention, then they, they're not going to hang around. Right. Um, you know, and or if you don't sound good. So, so we, <laughs> we try real hard, and we have a lot of fun. And, and uh, sometimes we may not sound as good as others, but we, we give it our best when we do it. Well, nobody's a record. Nobody sounds exactly the same every time. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <clears throat> now, tell me a little bit. You've got some other things going on, as I understand. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about what you got going on right now. Some well, projects. Well, um, from having played in different clubs all <laughs> over the, the area, I had not barely been nowhere else, um, I, I've w always wanted my own place, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted it big enough to get all my friends in there and uh, dance floor big enough for people to dance and have fun. We haven't had a place like that around here in, in quite a few years. Um, and so I come upon this building and I've managed to uh, secure it and, and get a lease on it. And, and so I've built, a, uh, built what I hope to be the number one nightclub within a hundred miles of here nice. and, uh, and very shortly. Um, it's, uh, it's like 6,000 square feet. It's really beautiful. We've 
we spent a lot and a lot of time the past 14 months working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taken a while, but it, it's, uh, I think it's going to pay off because it's really beautiful and, and, and it's, it'll be a nice place where you can come and sit down at a table. I will have a waitress come and bring you whatever you want uh, and, and several bartenders um, and not only the Raising Cane Band, but the best entertainment that I can find to book in the place, we're going to bring them. Now, Rusty, our producer, went out and, and uh, got some footage of the uh, Buckwild Saloon. That's correct. Buckwild Saloon. So let's roll the footage and uh, have a look at it. Hi, I'm David McBride. Welcome to the Buckwild Saloon. We're going to take you on a little tour. We'll go behind the bar here. Shine. Pretty little head on my shoulder. This is our horse of source. Pull over on the side of the road. <laughs> you you should have seen the people at the flea market looking at me when I told it that out there. Never <laughs> seen. If I'm asleep, girl, let me dream. Baby fall in and my kiss. It should just happen like this I trust it so much that There's no one else but us Moment that says it's so right and That's all we have in this life Baby, well, we'll be featuring all your All the local Give it all we got Local musicians and bands From the area within from here to Atlanta and Montgomery, uh, and some names if we can get them. It's cool, it's been a lot of fun. It's taken a long time, brother. We, we spent a lot of, a lot of time, uh, a few dollars. The largest stage in this, biggest stage I've ever been on. Around here, the last one like this was the Roadhouse or the Dallas Club in Columbus. We're right where we're meant to be. Baby, fall into my kiss. It should just happen like this. And trust it so much that there's no one else to wait on. Few things we we actually have already run the snake up to the sound booth, which is on that up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't I don't have it all yet, but it's in the works and it's on the way. And we'll have a 24 channel board uh, with everything. We're going to put in a house PA system so that bands can move in here and plug up an amp, and not have to bring a whole bunch of stuff with them there you to go. be able to be ready to play. There you go. And uh, and have a sound man also. Wednesday night have line dancing lessons like from seven to nine and then some karaoke on Wednesday and live entertainment Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They're running the water that we've been waiting on for quite some time. They got, because we had to have, we can have 285 people, we have to have a fire sprinkler system. And as soon as this water's in, we get an inspection on Friday. Um, then we hope to open first weekend in April. However, that hinges on this water getting in. Mm -hmm. They're here putting it in now, and, and I'm not leaving until we get it in. Mm -hmm. The Buck Wild Saloon, beautiful place, Dave. So you've got big plans for this. That's correct. All kinds of, you, you want it to be the biggest place for 100 miles. Now that's, that's I like that idea. Well, I, 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 and I've been to a lot, I, I guess I haven't been everywhere there is to go within 100 miles of here, but, but I've been to a bunch of them and, and I haven't seen many this size and I haven't seen any put together like we put this together. Right. Um, it's uh, all country. In as far as music, country, southern rock, classic country, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 the it's what it says. It's the mm -hmm. Buckwild Saloon. 
And I like that. I like the the whole the fact that it's huge because like so many places you play. You know, I, I've hosted Fountain City Open, Fountain City Coffee Open Mic, been to Soho, been to Del Ranch, and many of these places are kind of small. They are. And it, it, it's kind of a refreshing idea to have a place that, that can fit a lot of people and have elbow room. It can fit a lot of people and have elbow room and a uh, friendly, courteous staff with, you know, I want people, I want a place where people can come to and have a good time and feel comfortable and feel safe. Mm -hmm. Like I told the sheriff, if, if they're not, if they don't like it, they're not going to come back. Right. If they don't feel safe, they're not going to stay there. Mm -hmm. And, and I, put a lot of hard work and a lot of thought into what we put in place here so that it will be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody will, will want to come here and have a good time. I mean, and there, no matter how many clubs there are, people gonna go to all of them. Yeah. It, it, you know, and, and because something different, there's something different about everyone. Mm -hmm. Every one of them, uh, there's something different. And there's room for everybody, I think. Very cool. Now, have you started uh, putting together, like, have you started getting a list of, of bands that you want to come in yet? Because of some uh, technical issues with, uh, with all we've had to do to, this was an existing building and, mm -hmm. and we had to gut it and totally remodel it. And we had to add things that, that uh, we didn't realize we were going to have to add. So, mm -hmm. and it just took longer than we expected. And and uh, utilities and red tape, yeah. and, but yeah. the water line went in last night and, and um, we expect to be open within a few weeks. Very cool. Now, and because I haven't been able to actually put a date mm -hmm. on, because everybody on Facebook, when you're going to open, when you're going to open, well, I'm going to open the very minute that I can. And yeah. when I have everything in place, and, and it's coming together as we speak. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope to be open within a few weeks. And, and back to, because I haven't had a date, mm -hmm. it's hard to put a calendar right. together with acts mm -hmm. and different bands and stuff. But it will be the home of the Raising Cane Band. Oh, yeah. And then it'll, and then it'll be uh, a place for all the other bands that is you know, a couple of couple of weeks a month, or mm -hmm. maybe two or three weeks a month, I'm gonna be there, mm -hmm. and um, and then we're gonna start bringing other acts in. Very cool. And the ones that that uh, the people want the mm -hmm. most will be the ones that come back the most. You know? All right. Basically. So you're gonna have a huge throwdown with the Raising Can Band party when you get when it opens you up. You better believe. Awesome. <laughs> I think you want to come to this. <laughs> I think we're gonna need more help. Awesome. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Now, where exactly is the Buck, the uh, Buckwild Saloon? It's on Highway 280. It's one mile past the Somerville Road. On the left. Oh. On on right on the highway. Very cool. And it's one mile before you get to the Lee County flea market. So nice. So it's very, very close. Very yes. yeah, it's very it's easy. It's halfway from Opelika to Phoenix City and so we hope to draw people from from both. Auburn, very Columbus, nice. you know, Lynette, mm -hmm. Eupaw, Dalton. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got room for them all. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's great. Well, I tell you what, let's check out one of Dave's songs and we'll be right back after this. This is a brand new cover song by George Strait. So 
much that there's no one else but us moment that says it's so right that's all we have in this life baby drink up this love and give it all we got tonight summer honeysuckle leaking through a roll down window and we both know when the seat lays back anything can happen so imagine it'll never end just close your eyes and you can see we're right where we're meant to be baby fall into my kiss it should just happen like this and trust it so much that there's no one else but us this moment that says it's so right that's all it takes in this life baby drink up this love and give it all we got tonight give it all we got tonight Baby, fall into my kiss It should just happen like this And trust it so much that There's no one else but us This moment that says it's so right That's all it takes in this life Baby, drink up Come on and Give it all we got tonight Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, special guest Dave McBride. So Dave, this is the part of the show that I like to call the pimping section. This is where we pimp stuff. Shameless, shameless self-promotion. So let's get a recap in this little section of, of all the things, you know, just all in one place where everybody can get a hold of you. You can get a hold of me at the Buckwild Saloon. The address is 17695 U.S. Highway 280 East. It's in Smith Station, Alabama. You can check us out on Facebook. You can check us out. Our website will go online tomorrow. Um, the Raising Cane Band will be there playing very shortly and for a while. Um, and we look forward to seeing everybody there. Very cool. Now, there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Um, one is... What do you, as a musician, as a listener, as a, a person, think of the local music scene in the Valley area? You know, I spent a little time going, I spent most of my time playing when everybody right. else was playing. But then when I wasn't playing, I always liked to try and visit the mm -hmm. different places, open mics and the different bands that I have friends playing in. I know mm -hmm. most of the musicians in the right. area and, and I go see them when I can. And I miss seeing them when I'm playing. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, you know, there's a lot of talented people around here. And, yeah. and I've, got, I've got five of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I've got five, five of the, some of the best musicians in this town. And, and uh, I say five. There was five of us. Now there's six. We have a new guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to be a surprise because... 
Um, he's a very talented musician. He plays a lot of different instruments that yeah. that uh, hot country band needs. Nice. And he fills that spot. You didn't steal Jack Snipe, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, his name is Mark Whitehead. He's he's um, he's been playing music all his life. He plays cool. the fiddle, guitar, steel guitar, mandolin, dobro. Very if it's nice. got strings on it, he can play it. Oh, beautiful. Now, as far as the local music scene is concerned, how do you think it could be improved? Obviously, you've taken steps I'm about to improve it. To improve it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I like all the different places that we played at and, uh, and have enjoyed playing in different places, mm -hmm. but I'm done with that. And, mm -hmm. and um, now I still will visit my friends at different places when I... When I when I'm not having to work at the right. Buckwild Saloon. Mm -hmm. But I look forward to a lot of long hours of working yeah. at the Buckwild Saloon. I've already put a lot of long hours <laughs> in it, and now I want to enjoy it some. Yeah, yeah. long hours with the public involved. Exactly. Now, sitting out there in the audience, you know, we must have, you know, you know, eight or ten viewers by now, so sitting out there in the audience, <laughs> sitting out there in the audience is somebody with a guitar in their lap. Maybe they're sitting on the couch and they're like, man, I really want to be a musician. And, uh, or maybe they are a musician, they haven't gone out and played, whatever, they're, whatever level they're at. But an aspiring artist of any caliber, what advice would you give to an aspiring artist watching our show? Well, and I'm probably not a good advisor, but, but uh, from, from what I have learned, um, you know, keep, keep after it. You know, keep on playing. Um, now, me, if the computer had been around a long time ago, I'd be a lot better guitar player because you can. There's so many free opportunities on a computer for uh, instructions. Yeah. Now, singing instructions, you may have to go to school somewhere to get them. You probably can't get them off the computer, right. but but musical instruments, you can. And it's so easy to just pause it and stop it. Yeah. And and learn how to play it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I hope that when when I'm opened up and I play music at night, I'm studying music in the daytime so I can be a better picker than yeah. than just a player. And so, and to do that, you, it takes a lot of long hours of practice and people telling you to go somewhere else with that. <laughs> so so get van. a van. <laughs> There's definitely something to be said for the van. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, Dave, well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Special guest, Dave McBride, Buckwild Saloon. Go check him out. There will be opening. I'm sure that you're, you'll be announcing you know, pretty loudly when you get it open. Very soon. So yes, sir. Go check out the Buckwild Saloon. Beautiful place. And it's going to be an awesome venue. So check it out. I'm your host, Brian Mallard. This is Minstrels on the Block. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time on CTV EA. This is another one of my favorite songs by an artist out of Tuscaloosa. His name is Glenn Templeton. Headed fool, stubborn as a two dollar four inch mule, hard to handle as your granddad's tool, but I could be the one, and I could be as loud as an F 16. I got a river wide redneck streak, or I could be a full blown SOB, but I could be the one. I could be the one that's the one for you I could be your one crazy dream come true I could be the arms, I could be the heart I could be the love you could fall into With somebody like you with me There ain't no telling what I could be Cause you could be a star, you could even be the sun But I could be the one I could be a too much tequila mistake 
or I could be your heart's big lucky break. Might be a little more than you can take, but I could be the one. I could be the one that's the one for you. I could be your one crazy dream come true. I could be the arms. I could be the heart. I could be the love you could fall into. With somebody like you with me, ain't no telling what I could be. Cause you could be a star. You could even be the sun. But I could be the one. Yeah, you could be a star. You could even be the sun. But I could be the one. Yeah, I could be the one.